Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the Modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about something that's a little bit less technical, but probably just as important, especially if you're going to be working on a team or already are working on a team, something that you really need to pay attention to, and that's writing good, clean C++ code. And I don't necessarily mean using all the best practices, which is probably something you should be doing and why you're subscribed to this series, but I mean just writing code that's readable and has good style. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this, and this is what I'm talking about today, a C++ style. Now, if you Google this, probably the most influential or the top result that you'll get is Google C++ style guide. And this will describe different types of things such as, well, what should you do? What are some good practices? What are the right ways to name your variables, your function names, etc. And these are important things to keep in mind, especially when you're working in a team. Because if the code looks different, it's harder for other people to read, and we sort of get used to how we read code. In fact, I've heard incidental stories from folks who have worked really well and had a lot of synergy with other team members where they're like, hey, I don't even know if I wrote this code. Maybe my teammate did. And in fact, they did. And that's usually a good sign that you're at least having a consistent style. Things like indentation and how you space things out can also help prevent errors. Too often when I see students, for example, and the code has no indentation, it's very hard to read and get help on. So by at least writing clean code, if you do need help from a team member, that can be a reason to do so. It'll help them read your code and make them more likely to be able to help you without knowing they're going to strain their eyes. So with that said, the Google C++ style guide is sort of a starting point for folks. Now, style guides aren't perfect, and they certainly aren't laws. For example, you might have arbitrary limits or things like writing short functions. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. And this sort of gives a ballpark, you know, if a function is 40 lines. Now, is that a rule? Should that always be followed? It probably is going to vary. And that's where things like code review and talking with your teammates really matters. Sometimes you are just going to have functions or an algorithm that takes more uh, lines of code. And sometimes that might, in the scheme of things, be the best way to set up your project. Some folks, myself included, like, for instance, having also one class uh, or one data type created per file. That could just create a lot of files. It sort of depends on the context that you're in. So that's why usually when you're in a team, you should establish some sort of coding standard. So let's go ahead and take a few looks at some other uh, style guides here. So here's one for an Apache system here that adapts the Google style guide. So again, as I said, you're not going to always have one source to look at the Google guide, folks will take this and adapt it to their needs. So their naming conventions, um, how they name variables, constant, some rules on function names, etc., and general recommendations. Again, these are going to be good things for you to follow and be consistent with. Now, the other one that I found interesting was Bungie's uh, C++ guide. So Bungie's a, a gaming company here. And they talk about, again, the sort of importance of having a common style guide and for their programmers to actually follow. Again, this is just to show you that depending on your domain, the rules are going to change based off of what is considered the best C++ style. So I'm not really going to give you any super concrete rules in this video today, which might be a little bit of a disappointment. But that said, I do want to go ahead and have these resources available so you can read through them. I think it would be interesting to look at some of the domain specific ones too, to see what they have for deep uh, or, or maybe things that they consider very important for their teams. So here's just the Bungie one that I'm uh, scrolling through here. So what I also want to do is show you one more tool. And if you'd like a lesson on this, I can create another video for it at a later time. And again, just to help enforce the consistency of style, you can use things like Clang Format. For folks who are using IDEs or there's Vim plugins, for example, uh, like I use, but you can use a tool like Clang Format, for example. And I'll go ahead and just click on uh, this link in the top right here for the different style options that goes ahead and says, hey, we have some built-in predefined styles for LLVM, Google, Chromium, Mozilla, etc. These are some of the more famous style guides beyond the ones that I've shown you. We looked at Google very briefly. And this tool can automatically look at your code and try to format it appropriately as needed. Now there's other 
static analysis tools. And in this series, we've looked at uh, CPP check, for example, and we'll look at some other tools and maybe this one if folks want to comment below and see how this is actually used. So with that said, I hope this just gives you a little bit of intuition or a little bit of motivation to write some good style. Chances are a team that you join is going to have a style guide. If they don't have one specifically, you know, written as much um, in detail like Google's, for instance, then you probably at least want to take notice of the code that your team is working on and not differentiate. It'll make your teammates happy. It'll make you happy because you'll be able to read your code later uh, and not have to decipher changing style and wonder about things. So with that said, folks, I hope this was just a useful tip in today's uh, video and you enjoyed it and you'll consider looking at some of these style guides for your particular domain and see if you're going to adopt anything. Again, these aren't hardcore rules. They're going to change depending on your domain or what team you're working Working on and just keep that in mind as you go forward. But it's always worth a discussion having, especially if you're on a team. All right, folks, with that said, hope you enjoyed things and we'll go ahead and see you in the next lesson.